everyone! Today I will show you how to create a basic query using Work Query and the DAX system. You want to make sure you have a DAX session open. On the command line, you type WRKQRY and then press enter. To the right here, you'll see your different options of how to either create, change, copy, you can delete a query. Today I'm going to show you how to create, so I will place a one here. This line here will actually be the library that the query will be saved in. So I'm going to have it saved to mine. And then on the query line, I'm just going to press enter since I'm creating it. It's going to automatically put a one here on the specify file selections. So I'm going to press enter. If you don't already have the list of the most frequently used files for DAC, we will be more than happy to send that over to you. Um, today I'm going to show you how to just create a query using the item master file. And that file is DSANREP. Once I have that inputted, I'm going to press enter and then enter to confirm. Some of these fields we won't actually be using in this query, so I'm just going to skip over them and go over the more frequently used ones. So I'm going to tab down to Select and Sequence Fields, and then press Enter. This will actually show you the data that you want displayed in your query. Um, so I'm going to want my item number, my category number, my page down. I'm going to want my sales class number, my product class number, my tax class. And I see here that item description is also available. You might wonder why I'm skipping my tens. In this instance, it allows me to then put item description next to item number. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put an 11 because I know my item number was 10. And I'm gonna press enter. Then it'll show you the sequence. This query will be shown. It'll make sense when I actually show you the query. So I'm going to enter to confirm my changes. I'm going to come back to select records. I'm going to first go to select sort fields. I'm going to place a one there. This actually is how you want your query to be sorted. Um, in this instance I want my query to be sorted by item number. So I will put a one here and I want it to be sorted in ascending order. So I will put an A and I'm going to enter to confirm. And then I'm going to tab down over to specify report column formatting. However, before I do that, I want to show you why I'm going here. If I were to hit F5 to view the query as it currently is, you'll notice if I scroll down a bit, once I get to the thousands, they have commas in your item numbers and they have columns, commas in your um, sales class. So in order to get those commas removed, you go to the specify report column formatting, you place a one there, the cursor is going to automatically be where you need to be, and then you're going to do a shift F4, which equals F16 to edit. You're going to enter through this first screen, your decimal point, you want to put a five for none, thousands separator, you want to put a five for none, and a show negative sign, you want to put an in for no. And you press enter. And you're going to do the same things for your category, your sales class number, and your tax and product class if you'd like. And then once you have all of your changes inputted, you can just press enter. Lastly, I'm going to go to the select output type and output form, place a one next to it. This allows you to output to a printer for a report or to a database file, which will then be um, accessible through Excel. For this instance, I'm going to actually just have it output to a printer because I want that report to print out so I can review it in my hand. So I'm going to put a two here. I'm going to press 1 for detail, and then I'm just going to press enter. The printer 
is set to start print. This will go um, to your spooled file and it can then be changed to whatever your printer name is. So if you have a printer name that is PRT01, you can then put PRT01 and that file will go to this printer. So in this instance, I don't want it to go to any particular printer, so I'm just gonna keep it to start print and I'm gonna press enter. These options are available also if you wanna spool out the file which will then go to your work spool file. You can print however many copies, up to 255. And then you can decide to hold the file if it's a large file and you wanna view it before actually printing. You would place a Y here. You can enter through. This allows you to create a cover page if needed for the printer, the printed file. And this can actually be any headings that you see at the bottom of a report. Um, a lot of times we put any customer name that we are creating a specific report for. We'll put it, their name there. And any date range we might be running, we would just then put 0101 21 to and any footing of the page. So a lot of times you'll see the um, bottom of the page will have the library and the actual query name. And that is just for easy access to know what the report is actually for and how you ran it. So I'm gonna just leave that be. And last, but not least on this report, I want to go to select records. So currently I don't have any actual comparisons here. It's blank, so it's gonna put pull every single item that we have in our system. If I were to want to narrow down to one particular item, down below is where you will locate the field that you need. So I am going to want to look for one specific item, A, N, B, A, C, D, and then the test value is gonna be equal. You'll see the different test values up here. EQ is equal, NE is not equal, LE is less than or equal, GE is greater than or equal, LT is less than, GT is greater than, range is for dates, list is for specific categories and whatnot. And like is not, that's not commonly used, but um, there are different definitions. So in this instance, I want to look at a particular item number, 200007. If I hit F5, it'll show only that item number. What I can also do is if I want to have an item number not equal to zero. So this will then pull up any item number that's not equal to zero. So again, this is basically every single item that we have in our system. Once I have the information that I want in my query, I press enter here. Down below, you'll see select options. You can either F3 to save your, and run your query. So what I'll do is then F3. It's gonna bring up this exit this query. Save definition should be Y if you're wanting to save it. If you don't wanna save it, you're just playing around with it, you can just change that to an N and it won't save. Your run option should be one, uh, one for run interactively if you want this actually to go to a report. If you don't and you're just you know testing out something, then you can keep it as three. I do want it to run, so I'm gonna change it to a one. Right here is where you can name your query. I'm just gonna name an item list. It's gonna go into my library. I'm gonna change this to start all. Press enter. And down below, you'll see that your query option was completed successfully. I hope this video helped you out, and if you have any questions, please contact us at support at cdrsoftware.com.
Thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful day.